Statistics and Excel. Coin flip game calculating the expected value, changing the variables of having an even versus an uneven coin and even versus uneven odds. Part number two. Get ready and some coffee because it's time to get realistic with statistics and Excel. Because to be realistic, you need the data, people. And data is what we do here. We are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, then first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one. Because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because, apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. That's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you could keep building from this point here or you can look at this from a probability and statistics theory standpoint if you so choose. If you have access to this workbook, then there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, the answer key, the end result, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can work the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet. We'll be continuing on this worksheet here in the blank area on the right-hand side, practicing Excel formatting as we go. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing, where we will be going what we have done thus far looking at a coin flip scenario situation a great starting point because there's only two outcomes per flip the heads the tails adding the added factor than what we have done in prior sections or courses of the payout basically making this into like a carnival game or a casino game which can kind of turn some people on they like that and other people off because they don't like the idea of being in a casino or something like that but remember that these games kind of distill probability down to its essence that's how they basically built the game so they're perfect tools to practice the probability part, which we can then apply to other types of statistics going forward. That's why these games are quite uh, useful to us. So we added the payout. We could start with a payout of one to one, meaning if you imagine putting your dollar down, you're going against the dealer in some kind of casino or something. And if it comes out heads, which we're gonna choose is our winning item, choosing heads versus tails, then they will pay us $1. But if it's going to, and we take the $2 off the table, the one we put down and the other dollar they gave us, if it comes out tails, then they take the dollar. Now there's two components to calculate the uh, expected value. One is the evenness of the coin, the game itself, meaning is the coin fair? If it is, we can just take the choice that we have, one of two, divided by the total number of choices, in this case, one divided by two. If it was a dice, one divided by uh, six. If it was cards, one divided by 52. So in this case, we only have two options. So it's 50-50 if the coin is fair. If the coin were not fair, then we'd have to do something other than that, testing out the coin to see what the likelihood is of it being heads or tails. So if it was a fair coin and the payout was one to one, you would have what we would call a fair game because if we win, we would expect that to happen 50% of the time, 50 cents. If we lose 50% of the time, uh, uh, 50 cents. So the expected value over the long run would be zero because it would be an even or fair game. Now we can change that. We can change the payout to say two if we get a heads versus one dollar if we get a tail. So we put one dollar down. If we get a heads, they pay us two dollars. That's unusual for a casino to do, but that would that's the idea. You would expect the coin wouldn't be fair, right? If they did that, right? Something else has to be going on. But we're going to say that's going to be the idea. Now, if it was a fair coin, 
then that remains the same, 50-50 on the coin flip. But the payout now, if I win, is $2, which happens 50% of the time, which is $1 if I multiply those out. If we lose, we only lose $1, which is going to happen 50% of the time, 50 cents. So the, the expected value is now favorable, 0.5 per chance on average over the long term. That's what we would expect to happen in that scenario. If we bring it back to a one-to-one -one payout, the other thing that we could change is, of course, the odds of the coin, in which case I can't just take one divided by the total options because it's an unfair coin, which we could only determine by practicing or flipping the coin a bunch of times and determine, hey, it comes out two-thirds of the time or 66.67 about of the time. It comes out heads, which means that it's going to come out tails 33.33% of the time because those have to add up to 100. So if that's the case, then the expected value, even if it's paying one to one, is going to be favorable to us if on the heads side, which is what we're picking, it, it's going to happen 66.67% of the time. So that means if we multiply that out, it comes out to 0.67 versus 33% of the time, 0.33, expected value over the long run, 33 cents. And then we can combine those two together to get this option. So we have these options of the game, favorable, which is what we would expect, hopefully in an investment situation, long-term favorable, even, which is what we would expect if we're playing against a friend, constructing a game just for the fun of playing the game with even odds, unfavorable, which is what we would expect if we're playing against the casino, because the casino is going to have to win in the long term to pay for the casino, right? That's going to be the idea. Now, the practice tab. Now, what we're going to do from that point is we're going to look at some other scenarios and think, okay, what would happen? How many heads would we get if we flipped it two times? What's the likelihood that we get one heads? And how can we match up that result to our expected value, for example? We'll practice flipping the coin multiple times with Excel and do some somewhat empirical testing to see if the results that we got make sense and get a better understanding of them. And we'll do that with an even coin and an uneven coin going forward. All right, so you will recall that the practice tab has uh, formatted cells. Therefore, you can work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is where we're gonna work on the Excel formatting, continuing where we left off last time. We're on this column H. So the first thing I want to do is make a skinny H over here. So I'm going to go to the same skinniness. So I'm going to go to the skinny C, home tab, clipboard, paintbrush, and make a skinny H of the same size. All right, so let's, let's further think about and say, well, we can ask other questions of the coin flips, such as what if I had flips, uh, flips of two flips, and I, what's the likelihood that I get heads, one heads? out of two flips. That's what I'm trying to ask here. Okay, well, let's make this a header. I'm gonna select this home tab, font group, bucket, black, white, alignment, center. So we're gonna say that the flips, let's say we have the results are gonna be, uh, what's gonna happen? Well, we have one out of two chances to get a heads we're focusing on heads you know so and then and then the second flip we're gonna have one out of two so that means uh that if we multiply these together now this is going to be one uh times one which is one over two times two which is uh four so let's take the percent then if i look at this in terms of a percent We've got one half, one half multiplies out to one fourth. If I divide each of these, we can look at it from a percent or decimal standpoint. One divided by two, percentifying that, home tab, numbers, percentify, adding some decimals, 50%. This equals one divided by two. Once again, a line or a number, and then I can multiply those out or I can, I can do it this either way. I can say this equals one divided by four and go number group, boom, boom, boom. Or I can multiply it out this way. This equals 50 
times uh, 50, and that's going to give us percent do do the 25 percent. And I'm going to compare that less 100 percent, which is going to be one. If I make that into a percent number group percent 100 percent, and that's going to give us our difference of this equals 100 minus 25 numbers alignment percent adding some decimals so we get uh, the likelihood at 75 which kind of makes intuitive sense to some degree right if we have if we flip the coin it's 50 percent each time that it's likely to get heads or tails and then we have we flip it twice what's the likelihood that we get at least one heads on if we flip it two times so we're going to say right 75 percent seems uh, intuitively fair and you might say well that looks quite uh, positive so wouldn't the, that be bad if you're betting against the casino but remember we of course have to take into consideration the payouts and so if the payouts were still uh, one to one per flip let's let's think about that for a second let's first format this home tab font group bucket I'm gonna make this uh, blue and bordered if you don't have that blue by the way of course it's in the more colors standard it's on that blue right there and so now if we think about the expected value it's still basically expected value or uh, return for the flip one if we do it on a flip by flip basis because the flips are independent from each other which is a key concept we're going to say a home tab font group drop down black and white and so the expected return if uh, if we win is the one is the one times the expected value of 50 cents da -da. let's make that a percent da -da -da. and then we're going to say this is going to be equal to one times the 50 and let's add some decimals 0.5 and then lose which is of course negative one times the 50 percent let's make that a percent number group percent duh, duh, and multiplying that out one times 50 let's add some decimals duh, duh. and so then the likelihood then is going to be then the expected value to do it is of course equal to sum of those two and let's add some decimals du, du. let's make it colorful home tab uh bucket blue and bordered so we still have the odds of the first flip uh having an expected value of zero and then on the second flip then same thing of course on the second flip because they are independent second flip number two is going to be once again i'm just going to say equal to 50 50 it also comes out to zero so although we're, we're likely to get a heads out of two flips 75 percent of the time that's likely to happen when we combine that of course with the payout situation the expected value per flip is still going to be zero and then and then zero and so the reason we point that out is because sometimes it can get a little bit confusing when we look at that 75 percent we start to think well this is a a favorable situation because we're likely to get a heads out of the two flips but of course you have to take into consideration the uh payout on on and the payout is happening here on a per flip uh basis now if you, you could do the same but you could do the same kind of question if you said well what if i flip it the number of flips is three what's the likelihood that i get a head one head and three flips all right well if that was the case we can say let's make this black and white so i'm going to go header black white center so we can say the results out of it's going to be one half over one half over one half right and i can now i'm going to take the sum of those i'm sorry the multiply them together which I can use the product equals the product not 
as often used as the sum, but still a useful formula to keep to, to have in your toolkit here. So we're multiplying those three numbers together. That's what the product is. So one times one times one is of course one. If I do it here equals the product, we're gonna say two times two times two is eight. So that's gonna be the percent to two percent is gonna be equal to one over divided by two, one half or 50% home tab number percentify, adding a couple decimals. I'm just gonna copy it across this time, putting my cursor on the fill handle, dragging it across, boom. And then we can also calculate it this way. I can say, okay, I can take equals the product of these three, 50%, 50%, 50% multiplied together home tab, number group, percentify, adding decimals. We get the 12.5 less the 100%, one. I'm gonna make that a percent, home tab, number, percent, adding some decimal, gives us the odds, which are equal to 100 minus the 12, percentify, home tab, uh, alignment, I'm sorry, number, percent, boom, boom. Let's make another black column or row here or column. <laughs> I'll select these and go home tab brackets and blue. So, so now you can see it's quite likely, of course, if we flip it three times, you have like an 87.5% chance that if you get to get one heads and you win, if you get one heads, but clearly that doesn't mean that you're going to come out on a favorable position because of course, again, you have to take into consideration uh, the payout situ the payout situation. Let's actually test some of these out now and say, okay, well, how can I kind of empirically test this kind of thing? Uh, so we can use Excel to calculate our flip. So I want to make a skinny in over here so that I, I clear this this column. So to do that, I'm going to put my cursor on the H. I'm going to go up top, home tab, clipboard, and paintbrush. And not on the M, but the N, <laughs> and we'll paintbrush it. So we have the same skinniness, and I didn't mess up anything down below. Okay, so everything is fine there. Then we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna say this is our flip number, number of flips, and I'm gonna flip my coin in theory 500 times. So I'm gonna say one, two. I'm gonna select those two and copy that down to 500 flips. So this is what's great about Excel, of course is that it doesn't complain that you say, hey, I want you to flip it 500 times. Excel's like, all right, I'm, I'll do that. And then, so we can, we can test this out much more easily than if we had to, of course, flip the coins ourselves. We can see the number thing telling us how far we have gone. 500, boom, boom, boom. So there it is. And so then I'm gonna do my coin flips. So this, I'm gonna say this is flips one. So how can I do this? Well, I can, I could say, I could say that I've named the heads to be one, the tails to be two. So I'm code switching between one and two so that I could use Excel uh, to do it with a numerical uh, calculation here. So what I'm going to do is use our random function equals rand. And then I want random between selecting that one. We have a two arguments, the bottom and the top. So I want it to either be a one comma two. So it's just gonna return either a one or a two. Only those two options, one representing heads, two representing tails and enter. I'll put my cursor on it, select the fill handle, double click. And then I'm gonna double check it by saying control shift down. There it is, it took it all the way down to 500, bringing it back up. Okay, now it's gonna keep calculating. If you wanted it not to keep calculating, you could select it, copy, and then paste it one, two, three, which will solidify whatever random calculation it came up with and not recalculate them. But I want it to recalculate this time because we'll practice seeing the results change and that might give us a better idea of, of what we're doing here actually. So it can be a little frustrating, but I think it'll be good to keep it calculating flips too so don't let it drive you crazy it's going to keep blinking like that and it's going to be like oh my goodness i can't work because the stupid it's flashing at me and it keeps like a 
like a stoplight going on and off all the time, but it's okay. It will let it pass, let it go. We're going to go to the home tab, font group, drop down. Let's make this black and white and then alignment and center it. And then I'll make these skinnier. I'm going to go from O to R and let's double click in the middle, skinnierizing them. I'll take this one. I'm going to copy it with the fill handle to the right. And so there's same formula. And then I'll take these two, copy the fill handle down, boom, double click, control shift down to double check. They went all the way down to 500. Okay, so we're good to go. Let's take these top ones. I'm going to select them and say control shift down on the keyboard and then go to the home tab, font group, drop down on the bucket, make it blue and bordered as has been our custom. All right, let's test it now and see what the results are. I'm, I'm just going to look at this column here. So maybe I'll make that green for now. That's going to be our point of focus. And we'll use these columns later. So I'm going to grab this skinny N and make another skinny S with it with the same width, home tab, clipboard, paintbrush, skinny S, skinny S. All right. And then I'm going to say this will be the results. Results. And so I'm going to say it's going to be either, let's say it's going to be a head or a tail, but I'm going to codify that with a one or a two. So I'm adding this column. So we remember the one represent a head, the two represents a tails. All right. Remember that. That's what we're trying to remember. Okay. So given that, then we can do the count. So now I'm just going to take this column, which represents 500 flips and say how many of those are a one, which represents heads. So I'm gonna say this equals the count if brackets. I have two criteria, the range and then the criteria. The range is gonna be all this column. The criteria is a one. So to get that entire range, I'm gonna scroll over here, control shift down. I want it to be absolute. So I can still see my formula up top. I like to make it absolute right after I do that by selecting F4. So it changes those dollar signs and then it pops back up as well and puts me back in place so now the dollar signs just mean don't move these cells down if i copy it down comma second criteria count it if it's a one this one i do want to move down therefore will not make it absolute and enter putting my cursor on that one and then i'll copy it down double click to check my formula same range but now, and this one went down to two. I can double check kind of like on a balance sheet for accounting, look at my total. The total should be 500. We flipped it 500 times. So the sum of these two should add up to 500 and they do. So that's good. So that's my double check saying, okay, the count picked them all up because I've got, I've got the ones and the twos. It doesn't come out exactly even, but it's, it's an imperative word. You know, that's how the odds work, right? So I'm going to, divide these now this is our running total or running division you know the percentage of this column divided by this that 500 i want it to stay static as i copy it down therefore f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the v and the four enter grabbing that one home tab uh numbers percentify let's add some decimals to get it a little bit more specific and copy it down and then we'll sum it up equals the sum. Ba boom, ba boom, boom, making that a percent. Home tab, number, percentify. And there we have it. Let's put some, uh, some, this will be, what do I want to call this column? Percent, let's call it percent of total. Let's make this a header column. Selecting this home tab, font group, bucket, black, white. Boom, let's center it. Bam. Uh, this center doesn't work over here. Let's left align this one. Uh, left align that one. And then I'll select these because that's really covering these two columns. Or yeah. And then selecting these, we're going to go to the home tab, font group, this, and we'll say we want this to be buckets blue. All right. There we have it. Now, what would we expect these to be? We expected them to be, of course, 50 50 because it's an even coin. And they're not always 50-50, but if I double click on them, you can see they keep changing and they're all pretty close. 
to 50-50 if you flip them a whole bunch of times, which we did in our test uh, by, by the, using Excel 500 times. <laughs> so then let's go over here and say, all right, well, let's, let's now think about uh, the, the, the expectation. So if I, the spins, how many times did we spin this thing? We did it 500 times. Well, what do we expect to happen? So, well, the odds that we calculated uh, for it to be heads, we calculated over here the expected value of 50%. That's what we expected to happen. Home tab alignment percent. Let's make this column a little bit wider. And so that means our expected value, we expected, expected, that's my fingers are off, expected this to be equal to 500 times 50. So we expect it to be uh, 250 about, right? That's what we expect to happen. And, and so the difference to what actually happened, the difference is gonna be uh, equal to the heads up here, 227 minus the 250. And so there's our difference to do nine. And you can see now that, that these keep on recalculating. So every time I double click on it, I can just go boom. Now it's different by seven, different by one, different by seven. Now notice it's going over and below uh, zero. So we would expect this to be zero. The fact that it comes out to both positive and negative numbers as I do this gives me some indication that uh, that it's correct, right? So, and notice there's long strings before you get a positive or negative. That's not necessarily meaning that it's not correct because you can have long strings of random numbers of positive or negative, right? That, 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 that could be even odds still and still come up with a long string. In any case, let's make this home tab font group uh, colored and bordered, boom, boom, and there we have it. So now we can also think, okay, what is the, so the even pay, when we had even pay, let's make that, I'm going to make this green and white. And, and we're going to say, so the wins and losses, and then we're going to have the total. These are going to be our headers, wins, losses, and totals, home tab, font group. Let's make this black, white, and then we'll center it. And so the results, let's say the results on the wins are when it's heads, 245. The results on the losses are when it's tails. Now that one's 245, they're changing every time. And then the total equals the total should add up to 500. So we just basically took this table and changed the, you know, the, the row and the, top part. So then we're going to say payout. Payout on the win side, if it was even, is going to be one to negative one. So we get a dollar if we win, uh, we get a negative dollar when we lose. And so then we're going to say the total, the total then is going to be equal to 240 times, in this case that we won, we got a heads times $1. We got a dollar every time. In this case, on the losses, now the numbers are changing, but I'm going to say the 244 times we lost on this round, uh, times out of 500, and we lost a dollar each time then. So there we have it. Now, now, if I sum those two up this way, the sum is going to be, now it keeps on changing, but it's currently 22. So if it was an even game, you would expect this to be going positive and negative, you know, somewhat evenly as we keep clicking. Now you could have long strings of it being on either side and it still be somewhat random, right? But you would expect over time that you, it's gonna go both on positives and the negatives. And so, so there we have that. So the, 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 the expected return, expected return, turn per flip. So the expected return per flip, we said, if it was even, we calculated over here was zero. And so if I flip it, it uh, expected uh, return per flip. 
So then, so then the expected return should be equal to 500 times the expected return per flip, because we're going to get that zero per flip, which of course is still zero because it's even. And so the difference is going to be equal to this 44 minus the zero. Right, so, so it's just another way to calculate this because this will be different when our expected return is not zero, which we'll take a look at in a second. So let's go ahead and highlight this going from home font group brackets. And there we have it. So now let's imagine we have it. Uh, we have a favorable payout, let's say, and it's still going to be green because it's a favorable. It's it'll be uh, a favorable payout. Uh, this one, maybe I should have made this uh, orange because it was like, it was even. It's not what we colored it. And then favorable, I'm going to say boom. And this is going to be, so okay, so let's just, let's actually just copy this whole thing. Let's copy this whole thing and go boom, paste it. And then I'll just change this to favorable variable make that green font group making it green okay so then we're gonna have the same results this will equal i hit plus but same thing that and this will be the same on the wins and losses that are just carrying forward there's the 500 but now the payout we're gonna say that this will be our scenario we did over here where the payout was two so now two to one on the payout so now so now we have two to one so if this if we won 252 times heads we got two dollars which comes out to a payout of 504 and we lost 248 times and lost only a dollar so that comes out to 248 so then our total here is summing those two up the expected return per flip was is going to be equal to we calculated it over here our expected return uh per flip on the two to one was 50 cents that we calculated before so that's what we expected to happen and let's test if that is what happened so we go to the number group percentify and so there it is so the expected return is we flip it 500 times and we this shouldn't be a percent it should be let's undo that do, 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 undo do, 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 expected return let's just add decimals 50 cents okay so if we expect to get 50 cents on average and we did it 500 times 500 times 50 cents on average would give us 250 and then the difference what we actually got is 271 right because we split it out in this case 257 uh 240 243 heads versus tails two times on the payout versus one one dollar on the when we lost and that gave us our total of 271 which is over the 250 expected value in this case and again it recalculates every time right so now you can kind of double click on this and say that you would think that we'd get some positives and negatives there right if we keep on doing this process all right and so in any case there's so that's going to be the idea so next time we'll continue on this and we'll do some more examples uh and we'll say well what would happen if we flip on um, these three flips how many times do we get because we did this calculation that we said it should come out like 75 percent of the time we get one heads out of out of three flips so that's why we have these three columns we'll we'll test that out uh and then we'll change the value and say oh, well how can we empirically test if the coin isn't even like that two-thirds uh type of thing and test out our our expected values in that scenario